Greetings all. Well, let's see. Yesterday I was talking about climate zones, uh, more or less USDA. Um, today I want to talk about climate zones again, but I want to talk about climate zones right here on the Big Island. Um, the Big Island is a very unique structure on Earth. Uh, there are a few other places where you can go from the tropics to Arctic conditions in a matter of hours. This can be done in a few places on Earth, especially where you have extreme elevation rise and you're near the equator. Uh, so we're not the only place. But in the United States, I believe that Hawaii is the only place where if the USDA has 11 climate zones, then Hawaii has nine of them on one island. Yeah, we got nine of the USD climate zones right here on one piece of rock out in the middle of the ocean. That, that's pretty special, actually. Now, most people in Hawaii actually live um, yeah, in two, three, four of the zones. Most people do not go above 4,000 feet. It's just about the top of where most habitation exists here, from shoreline to 4,000 feet. And up to 4,000 feet, we are still in tropics, although we are in several tropical zones. Uh, sunset divides the, uh, uh, this island uh, into uh, uh, three, actually three zones, okay, as the sunset uses here. Um, mostly the low, warm tropical towards the shore up to 2,000 feet. From 2,000 up to about 4,000 feet, that's the cool tropical. Uh, and then anything above that starts to enter temperate weather. Uh, by the time you reach 6,000 feet on this island, um, you can encounter frost at any month in the winter. Oh, by the time you get around to, say, about 8,000 feet approximately, well, you're probably going to see snow every year in the winter. Uh, aside from astronomers and a few people at weather observation stations and so on, there's nobody that lives up in the area where it does snow here. But when it does snow, it sure draws a lot of people up the mountain. And since we don't have m skis here or ski lifts, you'll find people sledding on garbage can lids, boogie boards, you name it. Snow is an exciting thing in Hawaii. And yeah, so we got like nine out of the 11 USDA zones here on one island. Um, pretty incredible. You know, we're a little short of uh, permanent glacier and uh, a little short on permafrost. There's a argument because I've heard both stories that we either do or do not have permafrost on the island I don't know um, they claim that there's permafrost springs that run up on Mauna Kea and run at 33 degrees <laughs> let's go swimming um, but so and talking about the local climate here um, I meet a lot of folks whether it's on the channel or they're traveling around the island, you know, that have watched my videos and so they want to stop in and have a word or they drop by and ask questions, comments, you know, and so on. Uh, and so I'm always addressing issues for folks. I had a, a lot of guys here this morning and well, he's thinking that he can start himself a tomato food forest and well, <sighs> probably not <laughs> wrong crop for that uh, but hey, there's a common misconception mm, this is something I want to try to clarify right off plants come in various categories as far as how long do we live right so you have the basic category which is the annual which within a 12 month period pops out a flower makes a fruit and a, and a seed and then drops dead and leaves only the seed to perpetuate the next generation. These are called annuals. And uh, there's a whole lot of the plants we use that are in that category. Um, so many of our garden flowers are annuals. A lot of our herbs are annuals. Uh, basil, for instance, you know, there are perennial forms of basil like African blue. But the regular sweet Italian that most of us love in our pesto is an annual plant. 
Um, as with the gentleman this morning when I was talking about a f- tomato food forest, I said, well, sounds like a mess of weeds to me because tomatoes are not perennials. Okay, and so to continue, annuals, and then we have biennials. The biennials are plants that usually take at least two growing seasons, the second year, to be able to come to flower and make seed. A real common one, uh, the onion, the carrot, parsley, these are real common plants that all of you know, uh, that will take two years. Um, if an onion bolts to seed within the single year, you want to rogue it out because that's not what you're looking for. You need the onion to make a bulb first, go to sleep for the winter, and then turn around the following spring and make its flower. Um, same goes with carrots, same goes with parsley. Um, so these are plants that will take within two years time to be able to complete a cycle. Their lifespan is finished by the end of the second year. Then we have what we call perennials. And so perennials are any plant that will live longer than two years. Now that's wide open, okay? Some only live three years and they're perennials. Some live 3,000 years and they're perennials, all right? There is no set figure in there once you get past two years. They got to live more than two years. Generally speaking, most perennials are three to six years, are typical in a lot of the herbs and garden flowers and things. So, uh, this is really important. If somebody's talking about trying to make a food forest out of tomatoes, all right, uh, a tomato doesn't live more than a single year. It's an annual. And so you really can't build a food forest on an annual plant. Now, I guess you could have uh, oh, guavas or jabuticabas or bananas or something like this, which are perennial plants growing in a foresty type setting. And then you can have tomatoes that volunteer and reseed themselves periodically underneath those other crops and around them. You could grow tomatoes and ginger, tomatoes and turmeric, and a whole lot of different things. Could be combined. There's no real limit to this, I don't think. Tomato is an annual, and so if you just plant it out someplace and hope that it's going to continue, even though you're in Hawaii and it's tropical, see, this seems to be where the problem comes in. Is that people think because Hawaii is a tropical climate that any plant goes on endlessly here. No, not even close. <laughs> everything has its seasons, everything has its cycles, and that's all there is to it. Uh, a tomato acts about the same way here as it does in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, except in Minneapolis it probably doesn't get half the diseases that they get here. Uh, trying to make a food forest with a tomato, we just end up with a big messy weedy patch uh, that may have some volunteers. Um, I'm thinking that maybe the the Florida Everglades tomato um, seems to be a somewhat different species than a lot of the tomatoes and that one seems like it has a little bit longer lifespan. Now, I was familiar with a tomato they had here growing wild in Hilo for a while called the Hilo wild cherry uh, that seemed like it might have existed for more than 12 months. Although it's so hard to tell with a lot of these plants because they will either reseed themselves right in the midst and so other things rise up and you don't know, or uh, you have um, uh, pegging going on that a vine will touch the ground, make roots, and set up a new plant. You can kill the original plant and the one that pegged will continue like a cutting. Annuals, biennials, perennials aside, let's talk about seasonality. Um, because I, I hear from folks who aren't familiar with living in tropical climates um, that there's a misconception that for some reason they think plants go endlessly in tropical climates, which is not true. Everything has its rest period, okay? And fruiting seasons are, um, are regulated by the plants will flower and fruit at certain times of the year. Oftentimes they, uh, like the even days will trigger flowering in plants. And so then you get fruiting that comes later and so on well like pineapples okay we grow pineapples here pineapples are a tropical it never freezes here in uh, this area of the world but our pineapple season is only about two months a year the other 10 months they're growing they're not fruiting you see 
Uh, and the same is true with almost every piece of fruit. I have lots of citrus here, tangerines, oranges, tangelos, you know. They're all seasonal. They will fruit within their time frames. Most of the mandarins and tangelos I have are mostly winter bearing. Uh, the crops are starting to come on now. They have almost nothing in summer and so on. So it's a misconception to think <laughs> that tomatoes will live for more than a year in Hawaii. They don't. Uh, and that uh, fruiting plants will go on endlessly. There are a few, you know, the uh, um, one of the reasons we like bananas so much here, bananas do that. Uh, bananas really never take a break. And they just kind of keep putting out banana stalks, uh, so that makes them quite useful here. Papayas are pretty much the same way. We get papayas almost continuously. Now they slow down in winter because it's cooler and the days are shorter and they speed up a little in summer. But um, they don't really take a break. The Mysore raspberry is another one too that doesn't really take a break. Some plants like uh, Tahitian lime or Eureka lemon. Um, now these are plants that will flower in two cycles every year. Uh, and so you end up with overlapping crops on occasion and it looks like they might be ever bearing but they're not they just happen to make two distinct waves of flowers and fruit then another misconception that i uh, hear frequently actually and it's that because this is a tropical climate that anything grows here well that's not true either <laughs> uh, Things that like tropical climates thrive here, but that's only some of the plants on Earth. A whole lot more of the plants that we know are temperate. Uh, they're used to having a cold winter, warm summer. Well, some of the plants that come from those climates do work pretty well here. Others kind of work, but get a little confused. So like blackberries and blueberries, for instance, um, they grow here. They get a little confused sometimes as far as when to flower and when not to flower. And so instead of the great big crop of blueberries I might see in early summer in Wisconsin from spring flowering, I don't get that. I get, you know, some flowering here, some berries, some flowering there, some berries, and so on. And so a um, few of the temperate plants do work here, but they work here uh, strangely. <laughs> they get confused. Certain varieties of low chill apple will actually produce some fruit here. I have a Dorset Golden that occasionally makes some apples, but it gets very confused here. <laughs> it will try making two crops a year, you know, it does all kinds of funny things. Last time I looked at it, we were in deep fall, heading towards winter, and it had gone into a big flush of growth. For whatever reason says oh hey, winter's coming i better grow leaves yeah it's kind of unpredictable so the idea that just because it's a tropical climate that a given plant will continue producing year round in this environment that's not true uh, even to say with avocados the if you have the right combination of avocado varieties you can have avocados every month of the year in hawaii but you have to have multiple types. You need some that will bear in spring, some that bear during summer, some that are winter bearing, you know, and a few that overlap in between, because there are. There are avocados that will bear all the way around the calendar. But the same is kind of true for citrus, too. Citrus has different bearing seasons. And so it's, it's possible with some of these fruits when you're planting multiple varieties to actually get an effect that looks like you're getting fruiting all year long. But the individual trees do not do that. They take a break. Then they flower. Then they fruit. Then they take a break. Yeah, even in the tropics, this is true. And so the idea that uh, everything goes year-round around here is, is totally a misconception. There's no, there's no truth to that at all. Um, and since I'm up here, you know, 1,600 feet up the mountain, we experience both warm and cool seasons. There's not a lot of difference. I mean, 
it's almost winter. Um, I don't know what's today, 17th, 18th of the month or so. So we got just a few more days to the first official day of winter. We've already entered meteorological winter when we got into December. And of course, I'm, you know, sitting here in my ball cap, pair of overalls, and uh, I'm perfectly comfortable. Uh, if it wasn't for the mosquitoes buzzing around me here trying to, trying to bite me, got him. Nope, there's another one, though. I saw another one. They're trying to bite me. Otherwise, I'd be wearing my uh, Bermuda shorts and, and my Hawaiian shirts. So there's a little bit on that subject. Hawaii's got 9 out of the 11 USDA climate zones. <coughs> Everything has a season, even in Hawaii. Um, annuals are annuals. That's the way it goes, man. You know, They're going to run for a year or so, and then they give out. Um, you know, biennials, well, is a two-year factor, and perennials three years and beyond. So, whether you're in the tropics or not, um, things are still probably going to box themselves within certain windows of season. That's the way it is. Aloha. Y'all hang loose. <laughs>